what's going on in, in the world. And this is just here. There's, there's stuff like this going on all over the world. Uh, I, I want you guys to realize, see how lost the world is. So I'm gonna make my way through here. I want you to look around, see what's going on. So now, I, I know there's people that are praying. They're praying for uh, revival. And you know what? Yeah, go ahead and pray. Pray, pray as much as you want. Pray, pray all you can. But you know, if, if you want to see revival, well, actually, the revival is not for the lost. People are praying for revival, and I think they have revival tied in with lost people coming to the Lord. And of course, that, that's that's what it is. But you know, what God wants to revive is is the believer, the the people who made a decision for Christ. That's who God wants to revive. He wants to raise people that are supposed to be spiritually awake. They need to be awakened. They need to be revived. And, uh, but you know, the you, you look, at, uh, look around and see what's going on. It's a, it's a lost world we live in. So when you pray for revival, you're praying that God save all these people, that God change all these people, change their hearts, change their minds. Well, you know what? That ain't going to happen. <laughs> I hate to tell you that. You know, I hate to sound, sound negative, but we are past that. Jesus Christ is getting close to returning. There ain't going to be no revival. Now, the revival that needs to happen is in the believer's heart. Because look around and see how many Christians you see out here sharing the gospel. Just look around, dear boy. So these people out here are lost, man. They're lost. And... Uh, so if you want to see people get saved, you're going to have to come out here and talk to them. You're going to have to come out here and plant some seeds. You know, the, if you want to have a harvest, you know what you need to do? You need to plow the ground. You need to plant seed. Then you need to water the seed. And then you need to go out there and water it again and again and again. That's the process. But people, they want to see people get saved and they're not breaking the ground. They're not planting any seed. They're not even watering seed. So how in the world are you going to have a revival without doing that? those steps? You tell me. So you can sit there and pray all you want. Pray 24 hours a day. Pray all you want. But you know what? God told Jonah to go and preach in Nineveh. Guess what happened? He didn't do it. Now, before, before that, you know, uh, so Jonah didn't listen. He runs away. He goes and jumps in a boat. He gets kicked out of the boat, gets swallowed by the whale, spends three days and three nights there, and then he uh, he goes and guess what he does? He starts preaching. Why? Because God jacked him up. God got his attention, and then he started doing. He went to do what God told him to do in the first place. Now I don't know what you're doing. But as a believer, you're supposed to go out and tell people about Christ. That's what you're supposed to do. All of us. We're supposed to go out and tell people about Christ. 
So that, that's the question for you. What are you doing? What are you doing with the lost people? How many lost people do you talk to during the week? During this past week, how many people did you talk to? How many lost people did you share Jesus with? Think about that. And unfortunately, some of you guys haven't even talked to a single soul. You haven't planted a single seed. So if you haven't planted, you can't water. What are you going to do? Throw water on dirt and expect to have a harvest? No. Break the ground, plant the seed, and then water it and let the Lord bring forth the increase. Right? That's the process. So, so we come out here and plant some seed, water the seed, and let God bring forth a harvest. That's the process, right? So I want you to think about this. Who was the last lost person that you shared Christ with? When was the last time you shared your testimony with someone lost? Someone who is on their way to hell. When was the last time? I want you to think about that. See, I'm coming to you right from right here, Main Street, Daytona Beach, Bike Week. You know, these people, they're minding their own business like I was. How about it, guys? How about it, ladies? Everyone, guys? No, thank you. So, you know, um, I, I've seen, I've seen uh, one other team out here tonight. That's it. So there's hundreds of thousands of people here. And you, you think, you know, okay, where, where is, is there any Christians in this city? I mean, think, just think, you know. Uh, let's say if every church in, in uh, Daytona Beach sent two Christians down here. I don't know how many churches out here, but say there's 300 in the area. 300 times two, we'd have 600 missionaries out here right now, tonight. But unfortunately, I, I, can't, I can't see any. You know, I think I saw one, two, three, I think I saw four guys, they were all in one team. And praise God for those guys. They were handing out gospel tracts. They had some New Testaments, and they were handing them out here. So, praise the Lord. You know, they're they're out here planting some seed. But uh, I, I just want you guys to see. Look at this world. Look at this world. Look around. Do you think these Do you think these people care about about your Jesus? Do you think they care? Actually, if we're the body of Christ and the body of Christ is not here, then what's what's going to happen? Who's representing Jesus down here? I want you to think about that, Chip Winter. You know, uh, man, it's just, it's just sad. It's very sad. The, the, the church ain't even fighting for the souls of, of the lost anymore. They're really not. They're not fighting. They're not doing anything. I mean, look around, man. You know, heck, everywhere we go, it's the same thing. Everywhere. It don't matter where we go. But you know what? You get a, a famous uh, Christian band uh, to a church, and you'll have 10,000 Christians there, 5,000 Christians there, raising their hands to the heavens, singing around, jumping around, praising Jesus. And they'll even pay to go do that. But we can't even get a couple of hundred to show up here. Actually, we can't even get 20. Think about that. We can't even get 20 people out here to represent Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's sad. That is so sad. You know, this is where the lost are. 
don't you think that the church should be where the lost are? You know, don't fishermen go where the fish are? You know, we're fishers of men. We we are fishers of men. That, that's what the that's what Jesus said. If you followed him, he would make us fishers of men. That's what Jesus does with people who follow him. Now, if if you're if you say you're following Christ and you're not a fisher of men, you, you got to be following the wrong Christ. Because every single man that followed Christ or woman, he made them fishers of men. That's what Jesus does with people. You know, and, and these people here, they're they're really not, I mean, some of them are rude, some of them are hateful, but they, hey, you know, they, that's normal, they're lost. But, you know, uh, so far, careful one, guys, good news today about Jesus Christ. You know, uh, it's, it's not, we're not, it's not like going to Iraq or China or where those people, man, they can't do this. They'll be thrown in prison if they do this. But here in America, we have the Constitution and all the Christians like it. But why? Why do we have freedom of speech if we're not even going to use it? What, what, what's, what good is it? You know, it's like, uh, man, it, it's, it's sad. What? Careful one, man. You know, so, you know, as I walk through here, I just want you to see, see what's going on. Anybody care for some good news about Jesus Christ? So, these, you think these people care about your revival? You think they care about, about your preaching? Well, actually, they never heard it. They probably never will, because uh, probably will never come out here. Unfortunately. I'm just telling you what I see. And I see it firsthand. I'm here. Have you seen anybody out here sharing the gospel since I've been walking this whole street? I haven't seen anybody. Those guys probably left already. They've been here all day. So, I'm making my way across the street. I'm gonna go back down this side. So, I'm making my way down to the other side. Notice, Notice that at this end, there's a cemetery on this side. It's crazy, huh? I bet these, these people here buried here never thought that one day there's going to be a big motorcycle rally right next to them. <laughs> so you can't even imagine how loud, how loud it is out here. It's, it's very loud. Careful one, ma'am. Careful one, guys. So, um, you know, you come out here, you plant some seed, you know, and it's different when there's more. I'm telling you, it's a it's a big difference. Careful, one minute. It's a big difference when there's more people, you know, because uh, you know we get involved in conversations and talk to people, and I mean it, it's good. But you know, man, I mean. These people are lost, man. But how in the world are they gonna get saved if there's nobody out here telling them about Christ? We have to come and tell them. We have to come and tell. Good news, guys. <laughs> so, <coughs> So just look around. These people are enjoying themselves, enjoying the freedom of America while they can. You know, they, they shut it down. They shut it down. They were testing everything. And uh, it's, it's probably, there's some other stuff up ahead. Just watch. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. But man, you know, it's uh, I, I want you to see, look, look, look inside the club. 
you know, uh, these people are partying their lives away. They are partying their lives away. Okay, for one, sir. See, hardcore biker right there. Takes a good little gospel track. You know, it's, it, 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 you know if, if you give them an opportunity, they'll take it. But at this point, there is no opportunity. The, the, there's an a injustice going on. These people are not even being warned. They're not even, I mean, they're not even being told about Jesus. And uh, man, it's just a sad thing, you know. I, but you know, pray for revival. You know what? Pray that God sends you out here. That's what I'm praying. I'm praying that to the Lord of the harvest, that he will send out laborers. That's what Jesus said. Pray to him that he'll send out laborers. And I'm praying right now for that Christian that ain't doing jack. You just hang out and chirp all your life. You go out there and sing and jump around and dance around and do all that. But when it comes to going out and reaching the lost, you ain't doing jack, nothing. Why, are you scared? Are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Why not? Why not? How about it, guys? So, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs that the righteous are bold as a lion. Are you righteous? Have you been made righteous by the blood of Christ? What's your answer? What's your answer? Are you righteous? Are you? Because if your answer is yes, how come you're not bold? How come you're not bold? So you receive righteousness, but not boldness? So you're willing to receive the righteousness of Christ so you can make it to heaven? But you don't want the boldness? How does that work? It don't work. You get both at the same time. The righteous are bold as a lion. We're not ashamed of Christ. Let them reject it. Let, let these people reject it, but give them an opportunity. But right now, they're not even getting the opportunity. Because the church is lazy. They ain't doing jack. Who wants to come out here? You know, it's easy to pray for these people. It's easy. It's easy to pray for them. But are you going to come talk to them? Huh? That's the question. Are you going to come talk to these people? They need to hear about Christ. Thank you. God bless you. You know, it's just, just a, a little seed. That's all, man. That's all. It, it, it's all. Not, it's not hard. And you don't need to pray about coming out. Jesus already said go. He already told you to come. But you're just being there like Jonah, running away, hiding in your house, hiding in the church, staying in the church with the other Christians. You sing together, y'all pray together, you dance together, you worship together, but you don't witness together. You guys ain't doing that. And that's what's missing in the church today. It's missing big time. How about it, guys? Some good news about Christ today. You know, it's a sad thing. The church is being disobedient to Christ. He already said go. That was one of the first things he said as he was being taken up into the clouds. That's, that's what he said. Go. But unfortunately, not many are going. Not very many people are going. You don't need to pray about going. 
you need to pray about where you need to go, what place. But going? Now think about that. When was the last time you went somewhere? Specifically to go tell somebody about Christ. When was the last time? Come on, Christian. When was the last time you went out intentionally to go share the gospel? Can you remember? Some of you can't because you never have. And that is a shame. That is a shame. It's a sad thing. Very sad. How about it, guys? Some good news about Christ. You know, it, it's, it's, it's sad what's going on in America. You know, uh, you want people saved, you got to go out. That's all bottom line. I don't, it don't matter what you, you can pray till you turn blue. You can pray till Jesus comes back. But if you don't put your feet on the pavement, on the sidewalk, and get out here, nothing, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. How about it, guys? You know, I mean, how, I mean, just think about it. How in the world do you want people to get saved and you don't even want to come tell them? You don't want to come talk to them. How about it, man? Good news for you, man. How about it, guys? You know, just think about it. Somebody on this street tonight, somebody on this street is, is has an appointment with Jesus Christ, with God. They're going to die. Somebody on this street, think of all these hundreds, thousands of people out here. Somebody out here is going to die next. We don't know who. But I'm thinking how many times have these people have, have these people been told about Christ? That's the question. And unfortunately, it's going to stay this way. I'm not expecting hundreds of thousands of Christians to come out on the street to preach the gospel. You know, it, it's the love of many has just gone cold. It's grown cold. There, there is no desire. There, there is no desire to come out. People really don't care about the loss. There's a few Christians that do. And thank God for those, those believers that are. But if you're, if you're listening to this video, you're watching this video, and uh, keep going, guys. And you're, you, you know, uh, and you know what? If you get upset, I really don't care. I really don't care. You know, if you're getting upset, it's because you're getting convicted. Because you know you should be out here, and you're not. How about it, guys? Careful one, sir. Careful one. Careful one. Yeah, it's uh, so I, I made a whole loop. I went all the way around. I went all the way around and uh, but you know here but here it is Daytona Beach. And uh, it's loud, it's noisy, it's... Uh, but anyway, I want you to see... I want you to see what it's like. All these people. Multitudes, multitudes. There's hundreds of thousands out here. But you know, those, those brothers that were out here, they're not out here anymore. They left. They've been out here all day, so I mean, I don't blame them. They, they've been at it, you know, probably, who knows, since, since the crowd got big. About noon, I, I'm guessing it was about noon. Yeah, it's 8 o'clock now, so a good 8 hours. They put in a good 8 hours. So, how many, how many hours have you put out in the harvest field? 
You know, I, I grew up I grew up uh, in the harvest in the fields. I I worked in the cotton fields. I worked in the onions, potatoes, pecans, watermelon. I worked in the fields. And you know what? It it takes a lot of work to get some cotton. I've been there through the whole process. I help plant. I help irrigate. I help clean it. Then I, I help process it in the cotton gin. It's hard work. You know, so come in, if you want to see harvest, souls, you, you think it's going to happen just because you, you pray real hard? Because you pray uh, and, and have a big prayer meeting with, with uh, 20 Christians? No, man, I'm telling you right now, you got to come out here. You got to come out here. You know, I preach to the lost all the time, but today I'm preaching to you. You, lukewarm. Lukewarm Christians. You never witness in your life. I don't even know. You, you're not even saved, you know, to be honest. You can't be saved and keep your mouth shut. It's impossible. I mean, it is totally impossible. I, I don't see what kind of salvation you got. I really don't see what kind of salvation you got. Man, it's just sad. You, 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 you know, uh, you, you know, out here, you saw how many how many people are out here. Thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands. Look down that street. Look at that. Look at all them people. Look at all them people. Where's the church? Where's the body of Christ? Who's warning these people? Who's warning them? Who's telling them that Jesus Christ is coming back? Think about that, folks. Think about that. But I want you to do something. I, I want you to pray. I don't I don't want you to 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 pray if God wants you to come out. I can answer that question for you. He wants you to come out. Jesus already said, go. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He already said that. So what I want you to do is pray about where you're going to go. Find a place in your town. Go to the park. You want some tracks? Send me your e send me email me your uh, address. I'll send you some free tracks. Free tracks. You don't even have to buy them. If you don't need tracks, well then don't take them. But pray about where God you want God to send you uh, to a park in your city. You want to join us on one of these trips? You're more than welcome to. Believe me. On this trip, it's just me. All the guys are tied up. If they could, believe me, they would. They'd be here today, right now. But there's some things going on in their lives. But I guarantee you, the next round, somebody will be here with me. <clears throat> but I want you to pray, God, where do you want me to go? Do you want, Can you pray that? Do you have the guts to pray that? Or you, you don't even pray that because God's going to send you somewhere and you don't want to go. It's time to, to just stop that. It's time to stop that. How about it, guys? Some good news about Jesus Christ. Careful one, guys. Some good news today about Christ. You know, do you even ask God, hey, Lord, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go, Lord? Send me. I want to go somewhere. So I want you to think about this because it's very important. 
You know, evangelism is intentional. It happens sometimes, it just happens. But you know what? It's intentional. You gotta go. And if you don't know who is, one good thing about coming out here that nobody comes out here. There ain't no Mormons. There ain't no Jehovah Witnesses out here. There's, there's not even Christians out here. Hardly. So, man, we got it all to ourselves. But, you know what? Think about that. I want you to think really hard. I want you to think really hard, man. God wants you out. God wants you out. It's it. The work. So... So, God bless you guys, and uh, 